and we are live on the Frugal Crafters YouTube channel. I'm Lindsay here with Sarah. Hello. And today we are going to do a pastel painting drawing. I figured it would be a fun kind of a class to do today with my new drawing class now available. And 50% uh, off this month, there's a coupon code in the video description. And the link that's there should take you right to my page with the discount included. But if not, use the coupon code DRAWME when you check out to save 50%. Um, I want to make sure that my followers get the best deal. So that's only good to the end of the month. So um, I look forward to seeing you guys in class. Class. I've had a great great feedback so far so um, so yeah I'm really excited about that uh, we are monitoring the chat here and if you have any questions Sarah's here to relay them to me um, type the word if you do have a question type the word question in all caps and then um, you can type your question in normal letters otherwise YouTube might boot it out thinking that it's spam um, and I'll be taking uh, questions on pastels, on drawing, on the new drawing class, stuff that relates to what we're doing today. Um, anything else? I think that's it. Okay, wonderful. And there's also great moderators in the chat, so if you have other art questions, they can help you out with that as well. Uh, so we are going to start by sketching on these orchids. The reference photo is linked below, and we want to make it kind of fill the space as much as possible. I am just using a white either a white charcoal or white pastel pencil which is like a chalk or a dressmaker's chalk it doesn't matter we're going to start off just by sketching our flower in and i'm going to start with kind of an oval just to slightly smaller than how i want how big i want my flower to be so i don't have weird lines on the outside this is can't send me tints paper one side is smoother and one side's rougher and i'm working on the side that's a little bit rougher if you were following along with um, watercolor, I mean with uh, regular colored pencils, you'd probably want the smoother side. So just kind of keep that in mind. Getting a branch over here, and I'm going to put this little bud in. This branch underneath, and we'll put these other two buds in. My orchid is not looking very well, it's looking very wilted. I don't know if it's going to survive. Okay, so with this flower here, I'm going to find the midpoint and I'm going to draw some big, almost elephant ear like petals. Oh, and I have all the supplies I'm using linked up in the video description. You can use whatever pastels you have. It doesn't have to be a particular brand. These cost like five bucks there, you know, nothing, nothing expensive. Oh, and there's a giveaway, giveaway on my blog. Um, I'll be giving away, I'll show you right here, the set that I'm giving away. Um, it, well, this one's been, this one's used. I mean, I use this one, but it would be fresh and new. Um, drawing pencils, charcoal pencils, graphite sticks, willow charcoal, sharpener, eraser, kneaded eraser. Um, so if you're interested in winning those basic sketching supplies, except a brand new set from Royal and Langnickel, you can just go over to my blog and leave a comment and I'll pick a winner next Friday. This top petal in the back's a little bit taller and skinnier and put that in there and I'm actually going to make these a little bit larger I think so we'll have nice room to blend and we're going to have two petals that kind of look like that that dip from either side it's symmetrical the, the flower's symmetrical but it's not like the, the petals don't repeat themselves all the way around there it's a five petal flower with distinct petals and then we've got the center area which I'm just going to put two kind of almost like parentheses um, to kind of show where those parts are going but I'm not going to add more detail and then just kind of like a little um, semicircle like that for that bottom part and back here I'm just going to just kind of very loosely sketch it in, in a flower it's not going to be the focal and I might end up smudging it a little bit to make it not stand out so much. But I just want to kind of get that in there for a little atmosphere. All right, um, I chose a soft blue. This would be pretty on gray um, or green. It's, it's up to you, it's whatever your aesthetic is. And I'm also gonna be using some yellow in the flowers because I was looking at a bunch of orchid pictures today and I really like the ones that had a little bit of yellow and purple in them. Um, so I will be changing the colors a little bit. I'm going to start off with a nice spring green and I am going to go in and put my uh, stem in 
This is brighter than what it's going to end up being, so don't be alarmed that it looks so bright. It's easier to muddy up a color than it is to brighten up a color. And when you're working with a limited palette, like I have here, these 36 pastels, you want to um, you want to make sure you don't start off with it too muddy. You kind of you have fewer colors to work with, so you have to mix a little bit. I'm gonna bring a little bit of that color into the buds itself. You have any questions so far? Uh, nope, we're all caught up. Great. Okay. I'm sure we'll get some as, as we move along. Probably. When I'm working with a, a set like this, and I'm uh, I'm not going to use all of these colors, so what I'll do is I'll put them back in the tray, but I'll have it hanging over the edge so I'll see what ones I've used so far, so that way I don't get confused with all these colors that are in here. I'm going to grab this cream color, and I'm going to add some of that into these buds and into the flowers, the stem and the buds, I mean. Uh, Becky, quick, how long does the drawing class run? It's self-paced. You have lifetime access to it, so you don't have to rush. Um, I check in the classroom a few times a day to see if anybody has any questions or has work to share, so you'll get my support um, in the classroom as long as you need it. Um, and it is lifetime access, so you have it forever. Uh, so you can start and stop whenever you want. If you know you're not going to have time to do it till the summer, but you don't want to miss the deal, you can buy it now and log in in the summer. And if you forget uh, what email address you used to log in, you can always email me, because um, and don't feel bad about it, because I always get a few emails of, of how, how do I log back into my class, and it's not a problem. Um, so that's why I, I like that you can do it at your own pace. You don't have to show up at a certain time, and you're not going to miss anything. I'm going to grab a little pink here, and I'm going to add some pink into some of these buds. I really love the way that color looks next to the green and next to the cream. We're really doing pale desaturated colors at this point, so um, it looks really, really dull and pale, but we're going to be building up color as we go. And I like to bring some of these colors into the stem. I like to muddy them this way because I know all of my colors are going to uh, have harmony when I when I keep using the same colors that I've been using. Brian Minor, is there a way to get the pastel pigments into the tooth of the paper if using pastel dust instead of it still being on a stick? Um. You could, you could pick it up with like a, well, I'm going to do blending in a little bit with, um, I have a couple different tools here. These are soft tools by Pan Pastel, and they, they're basically like little eyeshadow applicators. In fact, I bought some eyeshadow applicators at Christmas tree shop once, and I liked that they had handles. They were different colors because then I could keep my colors, you know, I could keep using yellows on the ones with the yellow handle and whatnot. They work just as one. And there's also ones that are more like pat like painting knives if that's more comfortable for you. So by using that, you can push the, the uh, pigment and the dust into the tooth. I don't like to do that until I'm just about done because if you fill it up too quickly, you won't be able to keep adding. So um, yes, you can if you, you just pick it up with a with like a makeup applicator and apply it like you would makeup really, uh, and that would work for you. It might be a little tedious, but um, but you could totally do that. I think it would actually be easier if you were trying to fill up a big background that way and then maybe get some sticks or pencils to do your detail. I'm grabbing some purple now and I'm blending right over on those um, on those buds to bring out some of the brighter color. I want to stick on top of the pink when I do that if I want my color to be nice and vibrant. If I want a duller color, I can go over the green. Make sure your lines go with the contour of your of the bud. You wouldn't want to color this way or color straight up and down near the edges. You want to go like make it match the contour, like latitude and longitude lines on a globe. And, oh, we were using some brown to add shadow on the stems here. I'm just really careful not to let the stems get too thick because I want the background of this to stay pristine so I can keep, uh, so I can just keep that soft blue. I know someone will ask me about fixative, um, and I generally try not to use it unless I absolutely have to because it does, like if you, especially if you have a lot of um, light colors, like colors with white added or you use a lot of white, 
it tends to make the whites disappear. It makes your colors a lot darker. So that's why I tend to uh, to avoid it. But if you find everything you're doing looks super pale, using a blast of fixative can actually uh, help out your situation. Now I'm gonna move over to the flowers. This is not blended in and there's a lot of loose dust on the paper, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Um, try not to blow your dust. It's very tempting. Um, and if you're using a uh, student grade pastel like this, you, it's, you don't have to worry about toxicity, but it's still not a great, um, a great habit to get into. So I would just, you know, just be careful about it. Now, so for the flowers, I'm actually gonna start with some colors I've already used and I am going to add in some pink. And I'm using the flat edge of the end, so I'm not using not in the corners. I'm laying in quite a bit of color here. You want to keep recycling your color. It's not just good for the environment, it's also good for our paintings. Don't worry about the dust. I'm not covering up my entire sketch though because I don't want to lose it. Now on this flower back here, I know I'm gonna want that to be a little bit darker and I want it to recede. So I'm gonna work on this for a bit and I will blend that before I work um, a lot on this foreground flower because I'm gonna want that foreground one to be the most detailed part of this picture. So I'm going in and adding some purple into this. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna pretend that that front part of the orchid, I'll show you on my reference photo. I'm gonna kind of pretend that this doesn't exist right now. I'm gonna get these back leaves down and blended. And then once I'm happy with that, then I'll put this portion on top, okay? So you kind of wanna work back to front when you're working with an opaque medium like this. It just, um, it, it saves you from kind of getting it, it keeps your work cleaner, I guess is the best way to say it. And you're gonna hit the hot mess phase here and it's gonna look awful, but you just gotta stick with it. If your pastel picture looks awful, you're probably just not done. Uh, Carol Reed, can you put a link up for the light blue foam tip pastel tools? The ones I that look like offset paint palettes. I think they are linked up. Or did okay, I link is that up the soft the soft tools? It, okay, if, so it is linked. I think it's linked. If I link to these ones by mistake, I'm pretty sure I linked to the blue ones. But if I link to these ones, um, probably suggested underneath these would be those blue handles. But they're yeah called soft tools. They're made by Colorfin, which is a company that makes pan pastel. And I'm just gonna go ahead with my finger and blend this because it's a big area. A lot of people don't like the feeling of pastel dust on their fingers, so that would be a good um, reason to use uh, like a makeup sponge or one of the pan pastel tools. The pan pastel sponges are firmer than um, than a makeup tool, a makeup wedge, and they last longer. In case you're wondering what the difference is, um, and I have all mine. These little they come like when you buy the sets, they have these little jars with the little tips in them, and I just keep them all uh, in there. I don't think I have any of the big sponges. Oh, I got one of the big sponges here just so you can see. I'll actually show you it in motion so you get an idea. But th that way you can blend it that way. I feel like it picks up a little bit more than my fingers do. My, like this will almost erase, but my fingers will push it into the, um, the paper a little bit more. And these sponges would be more for like picking the color off of the stick if you're using pan pastels. These are not as soft as pan pastels, so they're not they're not gonna pick up the pigment. So that's what those are made for. I probably wouldn't bother investing in them unless you're going to be using pan pastels too. Okay, so now that I've got that color down, I think I wanna darken up a little bit on these petals that I know are kind of in behind and blend. And then I'm gonna tap my dust off. I'm just gonna do it right on my paper, but you can do that over a trash can rather than blowing it. So the back of the back of my paper will get some dust on it, but I'm not too concerned with that. And now I'm gonna grab my white, and um, I just want to make sure that I do keep the line, you know, the quality of the line nice. I am going to add some details here. Jill Maschianica, I have heard that new pastel is water soluble. Are all pastels water soluble? What effect does it produce? 
Yeah, most chalk pastels are water soluble. Um, it's, it's basically, you know, like mixing chalk with water, you get kind of a chalky watercolor look. Um, I would do that on watercolor paper as backgrounds. And then I would probably add more layers of pastel on top of that. New pastels are made by Prismacolor. They are very firm pastel. They're firmer than these. They're great for your first layers of a painting and then you can layer over them with a softer pastel. So it just gives you a little bit more uh, layers that you can add into a painting. I'm adding a little bit of white at a time, blending it, seeing what I think. And I think I wanna actually get a little bit of yellow on this flower. So I'm going with this kind of buttery yellow and I'm gonna add a little in here. Now don't over blend because you could end up with um, some mud where it gets close to the purple. And I think I might add a little bit of um, bright pink. Let's see what I have for a bright pink color. That's kind of bright. Amy Livingston, what is the difference between pastels and blackboard chalk? Um, blackboard chalk is quite a bit harder. Um, so it would be difficult to, um, it wouldn't lay down quite so much color. You'd get a much scratchier um, uh, quality to it. So I'm gonna make this, uh, the front of this flower here. And it's a good pr to practice on this one back here because it's not gonna be the focal point. So I'm starting off with kind of two parentheses. And then I am going to put a triangle shape underneath. And then kind of make that into a curvy diamond. Add a little bit on the edge. And I think I need a color that's a little bit more hot pink that I don't have in that set. So I'm going to open up another box of pastels that I have handy. And grab something that's a little bit more magenta. There we go. This color here is nice and magenta. Nice and... I just need something that was cooler than that red that I had. And I'm going to add that right over that purple. Now because I am working in a smaller space here, I will go to a, a blending tool and I can just kind of work that into the tooth of the paper a little bit. And then I can actually take the leftover color that's on the tip of this because it's got plenty of color in there and I can add it to other parts of the flower. You pick it up and redeposit it. especially around underneath the petals from this flower because that's gonna help give me a nice shadow. And I can cover up that, um, that red that I first used that wasn't quite right. And I'm actually gonna put that out of the way so I don't grab by mistake. It was just a little too warm. And then I'm gonna grab this color again and I'm gonna do the inside of these tiny petals. So just kind of like I'm turning that parenthesis into almost like a teardrop shape. Susan Egan, why pastels? Is there a time when you reach for them before say acrylics? Uh, I'd probably reach for about anything before acrylics. I'm not an acrylic painter. Um, I like them because they're immediate. And um, they're, they, you know, you can get that opaque look like you would with acrylics, but you're just, you're just open your box and you're ready to go. I think that's what it is about acrylics that I'm not like, why they're not a favorite of mine is that I like to just be ready to paint at a moment's notice. And all I have to do here is just 
open the box and my 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 paints are ready you know it would be basically if I just want kind of a uh, I want to be able to layer and I want a more opaque medium and they're also nice to use over watercolors uh, it's a great way to rescue a painting that might have gone a little awry Autumn Grimes how do you clean your soft tools you can wash them just like you'd wash a makeup sponge, but I generally don't. And I have enough that I have like, a, I'll have like a, a tool for, um, for pink and a tool for red and a tool for, I just kind of use it like colored family, kind of like you would an ink blender if you do any inking, like rubber stamping. Um, you know, you'd have like one tool for each color family. That's kind of what I do for my, my tools there. And we have a little hood on top. So you want to just wanna make a little circle with your white chalk. Kind of right at the top of everything. And I need a little bit of a golden color down the center. And I am going to grab just kind of like a yellow ochre color. And that's going to go, I'm just going to make like two little marks side by side in here. And a little bit on that bottom, just like a little vein almost on that bottom petal and then I'm going to go back in with my magenta and make a kind of bring that vein to the outside edge and I am going to grab a little more purple up here and you can see it starts to get refined you know it takes a little work takes a little time but it finally it eventually gets there I have to say that I, I personally, and it bugs some people, I like to blend with my fingers as much as possible um, because I feel like I just can uh, you know, being able to feel the material for me is is um, is nice. I feel like I can control it better. Oh, don't don't be afraid if you hear these crazy noises. There is tons of snow falling off the roof right now. Uh, Becky, quick! In your drawing class, do you cover oil and soft pastels? Um, we do. Uh, the first ten lessons are all graphite charcoal lessons and then in the second section I do some bridging media and we do Conte crayon and Conte crayon is kind of, is like your pastels they're a little firmer and there's only um is only like a handful of shades of brown black and white so that's that's what we go to in that class um and then you can go on and explore pastels from there I wanted to really keep it to drawing with as limited supplies as possible so that's why um, that's as far as we get into that but that is definitely the bridging media to either type of pastel you want to use i'm using a pastel pencil here now um these are generals pastel pencils they are very inexpensive and as far as i'm concerned they they work as well as the expensive derwent actually i like them better than derwent pastel pencils because they just seem so dry to me um i haven't tried all the pastel pencils in the world but uh i just want to let you know that sometimes a lot of time it's not necessarily how much you pay for an art supply that that tells you its quality so i did link up to these or you know 10 bucks for a pack of 12. and really if you're if you're just using to do some details here and there you don't need a bazillion colors you just need a few so that you can you know put a few you just need like kind of one purple one pink one yellow just enough to be able to get a few details in there if, you, if your pencil your pastel is not quite sharp enough See, I'm going back in with the white here and defining the edges of my petals. Kim Richmond, I have no drawing experience. Is this course appropriate? I'm assuming she means a drawing course. Yes, it's a beginner course. Um, it's really designed for people that want to learn how to draw, people that have been painting for years but never really learned how to draw, so they're stuck kind of using... Um, templates and patterns, you know, and then they can only, they're just really limited as to what they can make because they have to make sure there's like a pattern for it. So that's kind of what I wanted to um, hit with this class is to make sure that, you know, people can create what they want to create. So yes, it is beginner. And just a side note from Joe, uh, you, he likes that you put male face in one of your lessons. Yeah, there's a lot of girl faces. Yeah, that's yeah. the point. You don't get a lot of tips on drawing men, men's faces. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, I you do see that a lot. And I was um I'd heard somebody ask about that in a group I was part of once, saying that how come nobody ever draws 
men's faces. And I'm like, you know, that's that's right. You don't really see that very often. I mean, sometimes you'll see fan art. Well, people will draw will draw men, but definitely not as, as popular. Okay, so now I'm just gonna tap with my fingers, soften some of these lines, because like I said, this one is the, not the foreground piece, this is the kind of accent in the background piece. So I don't want a ton of attention on it. Well, I do want to put the little spots on. Whoops, with my purple. Your watercolor class isn't on sale, right? Just the drawing class? Well, if you use the coupon that I put in the video description, you can use it on any class. So that's a little secret just for my viewers because I want to make sure that it wasn't going to be any issues with coupon code. So I said, apply it to everything so that I don't have right. to worry. <laughs> so that's a secret for you guys. Um, if you use the coupon code draw me, you can get 50% off um, everything. So, so have fun with that. I just sometimes when you're when you try to do a very specific coupon, code, I'd rather have like tons of people getting awesome deals than have anybody aggravated because they can't get a coupon code to work. Baru Siva, what is white charcoal? You know, I think it's just chalk. They do call it white charcoal, but unless it's like the burnt ash where, you know, sometimes it turns white. Uh, to me, it, I think it's just chalk. But I don't know for sure. I, you know, I know sometimes like, you know, you look at in a fire pit, you do get those white chars. So maybe that's what it is. But, um, but I tend to think it's chalk, just a really soft chalk. All right, I'm gonna stop fussing with that because we can do that all day. And we're gonna move on to this flower. And we're gonna do a lot of the same stuff we just did with the same colors. And remember to leave them out as you go. So if you do have a big set of pastels, you're not confused and grabbing the wrong color by accident. Not that it's a huge deal, but if you, um, if you only use a color once, it can seem a little discordant. And we're gonna do our purple in the edge here. If you ever feel the need, like you need to sharpen your pastel, you can use like a sandpaper stump, but you do tend to wait, you do tend to lose some of the, um, some of the charcoal or chalk when you do that. So what I will usually do if I can is just break it in half and that usually gives me a nice edge. And then I have another, you know, just a couple chunks I can work from. But you can, you can sand it to a point if you need to. Uh, have uh, Mary Magoo, have you used pit pastel pencils? I have not. No, I have used um, the Van Gogh brand, which is no longer available, which I really liked. It was They were very high quality and inexpensive. I've used the Derwent, which I'm not crazy about. Um, but I, you know, I kept wondering if maybe I had a faulty batch, so I would be hesitant to like say anything negative about the pencils in case I just had a bad batch. But I hear the same complaints from other people that they're very hard and scratchy. Um, so they're, they're not a favorite. I like these cheap generals and, um, but I have not used like Carbothello. Um, I have not used the pit pencils. So if anyone has that wants to chime in, please do. That would be great, but I personally haven't used them. And again, I'm going to save this part here until after I'm done blending. I think I'm actually going to go ahead and get my white in while I'm at it. Cause I think I can get all this blending done in one go. Hopefully it's not too scratchy sounding with my microphone on the table. Try not to go over your, like too far over your lines as you're overlapping the other flower. Try to get a little bit of each of those colors on each petal. And then you're gonna go in and blend. You can always have a tissue or a paper towel handy to wipe your fingers off. I like about pastels is that for the actual working characteristics your student grade pastels that cost like a tenth of the price will give you the same enjoyment and the same results as your artist grade pastels now where you're going to find the difference is of course light fastness so if you know you're going to spend 20 hours on a painting that you want to last 500 years then go ahead and you know splurge on the artist quality pastels but if you're just learning or whatever you're going to do is going to live in a sketchbook then you know have no qualms about using the the student grade ones because you're going to get the joy without the price tag and without it being too precious you won't be afraid you know to use them up and to break those sticks in half if that's what suits your piece better 
and I'm pulling the, um, the pastel into the area where I'm going to have that front section because um, I don't want to have any like blue paper showing through there. I want to have like petals back there. And like I mentioned before, I am pumping up the color because I wanted more color in my flowers, but I really like the composition of that photo. I like to get my darks in and blended, and then I like to go in with my, uh, my whites for the crisp highlights. That seems just to work a little bit better. Once you get that pastel kind of locked down, it's easier to layer your white on top. And now in with the white stick, I am going to uh, find a nice sharp edge. And of course you can go in with your pastel pencils after and um, sharpen anything up that you need. Bring in some stripes. And then because this petal's in back, I'm actually gonna blend it before I move on to the others. I'm gonna take a little more care with this one because this is our focal point. And then in the, with this petal, we're going to go up and around. It's like a big elephant ear. And swoop it around like that. And I'm just kind of looking at my reference photo just to see where it is lightest. It's lightest at the edges here and here at the tip. And I can pull in a few streaks and I can blend it. Uh, Tana Lahane, what is the difference between Derwent drawing pencils like the ones you use on the Tiger and regular colored pencils? The big difference there uh, is that the Derwent drawing pencils are... Uh, yeah, they're called the Derwent Drawing. They are um, thicker core, so a, the, the pencil lead itself is like 5.5 milliliters, no, mill, but millimeters uh, wide, whereas regular colored pencil is usually about three and a half mil, millimeters wide. So it's just thicker and it's all earth tones. There's no vibrant colors in there. You could definitely use your um, regular colored pencils if you wanted to just show just choose those lighter colors and um, the other thing about the Derwent drawing pencils is they're a little chalkier so they're a, they're kind of like a cross between a Conte crayon which is like a really compressed um, chalk that's got a little bit of a, of a wax to it not a lot it definitely feels chalky but it's kind of like a new pastel really hard um, chalk and a colored pencil, which is, you know, really, really waxy. It kind of falls in between there. So you can put on a lot of layers, but you're, it's got a very limited color palette. And we're gonna do this lighter petal over here, nice and crisp. If you like to color, like do nature studies um, with earth tones, they're a great set. If you if you prefer more vibrant colors, you probably wouldn't get as much enjoyment out of that set though. It's not as versatile as like a good set of colored pencils. Okay, so I've got pretty much everything in and blended. I'm gonna tap off the extra. I'm gonna grab my purple pastel pencil like we did before. And I'm gonna, oh, first let's put in a little bit of yellow like we did, that was really pretty. We'll put on some yellow. And some of the petals here, that's. You'll notice that as your tooth starts to get full, like where we've blended and we've really filled in the tooth there, when you add some more color on top, it almost wants to um, like kind of scrape the color underneath off. 
So if you were working and you knew you wanted to use a lot of layers, you would do your bottom layers with like your really hard pastels, like your new pastels, and then you'd work up with softer layers as you went. And that would let you be able to put more media on your paper. And then I can just kind of sketch in some of the, some of the veining veins with the purple chalk pencil. And keep the contours of the petals in mind as you're doing this. So the only time you'd see a straight line would be like kind of towards the center. And then after that, it would kind of curve to the edge of your pet petals, like a pumpkin. Like if you're looking at a pumpkin and, and you look at the lines on a pumpkin. And don't put every little detail in your, let your brain just fill in the, fill in the gaps. Okay, tap off the extra dust there and you can very gently make sure my fingers are clean here, blend in some of that yellow. I think it's pretty to leave some stuff unblended so you get those really um, raw marks and bright colors. Now for the center, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna start with parentheses with, with, um, with our pink in the corner of the stick. And we're going to put a parenthesis over here. And then we're gently going to bring back, it's almost like this is a trumpet. Does that kind of look like a, like a trumpet there? And we're just seeing the edge of those petals. See a little bit more on the inside of this one because the way it's turned away from us. And then in the center, we're going to have a that funny shape that's kind of like a almost looks like a shovel orchid blue 24 if you get a bit of pastel on part of your paper where you don't want it is there a way to remove the oops yep um you can use a kneaded eraser which is this thing right here it looks like a piece of clay but what you do is uh, you just kind of stretch it out to clean it and then if you got a boo-boo you just press it and lift up that dust or you can, you can gently rub it if, if it's a big boo-boo, but generally pressing it and lifting it will do the trick. And I'm gonna blend this a little bit to lock it into the paper. Gail AC, how would we seal this so the chalk doesn't brush off? Um, what I usually do before I'm ready to frame it is I will tape a piece of glassine or deli paper to it and that will um, keep anything from rubbing against it. But you can use fixative. If it's not a drawing that's very important to you, you just wanna preserve it in a sketchbook, but you don't worry about longevity, I would just use hairspray. I use Aquanet, quite frankly, um, for stuff in my sketchbook that I'm not ever gonna sell or worry about. Um, but I, I try not to use fixative if I can help it because it does darken the colors a little bit. Okay, so now I'm gonna do some detail here. And I kind of outline the edge of this petal. With my pencil just makes it a little easier to handle. And I'm gonna do this one up here as well. and blend it. And then get that little spot right there, that little dot. And get that vein kind of in the center of that bottom section. And you can even see and some veins coming up the side there, and I want to get those in. And I'm actually going to sketch on the center stamen here. It kind of looks like a diamond. And it's white down the center, and then I'm going to use my yellow ochre color to get the edges in. This is the same color I used 
on the petals and now I'm going to use the deeper one to get a little more color on the edges. And I'm going to use my purple pencil to darken on the inside of the flower. Patty Picasso, is blue tack okay as a cheap substitute for a kneaded eraser? If it works, go for it. Um, I've had some kneaded erasers that are very much like that material, but the ones that work the best for me are like these, um, I think Prismacolor and Faber-Castell have a good one. They just feel a little grittier. They don't leave behind any residue, but they're more gray and they're just, they don't look so, they don't look so shiny. They look more, if you're looking at them in a store through a package, they look kind of gritty. Um, they're not expensive. In fact, I think they might be cheaper than poster putty. So give it a try. If it works great, if it, if it doesn't erase enough for you, then um, if it's not abrasive enough, then they're not very expensive. Usually like if you have an art supply store, they're usually under a dollar. If you order them online, they're more because um, unless you're ordering them um, like with a bunch of other things at an art supplier, if you're getting them like on Amazon because they're such a small item, I think they tend to charge a little bit more. And now I'm just gonna go with my white pencil and do those um, brightening details on the edge of the petals. And I just really like these general pencils. They're cheap and they're soft and they sharpen in my, I just sharpen this in my electric pencil sharpener. Um, they don't tend to crumble and break. They're, they're just a good product and they're cheap, which is all the better. And I like my Royal Line Nickel Pastels. They have a lot, of, I don't think they have pastel pencils, but they have a lot of products that they're, they're geared to students. They are priced for students and they're geared to students. And um, my kids, I my kids use a lot of the Royal Line Nickel products because they're non-toxic. I think they're all non-toxic. I wouldn't, I don't know about everything, but everything I have got for my kids is, and they're just so affordable. And I thank them because they're they're sending the the prize out for for this giveaway. So I'm excited about that. It's nice of them. Okay, I'm gonna leave that be for now, and I'm gonna move over here to this these uh, buds here. And I like to skip around in a picture because I find that when I do that, it gives my eyes a chance to rest between different elements. I am gonna just very gently start to blend some of these colors. Try not to over blend, you just wanna kind of just like tap and wipe, I guess. You just want to gently nudge the colors together, but you don't want to like make one solid color. Now, because my fingers are a little wider than that branch, I'm gonna go in with a tool here. Alora Chu, do you have any tips for working on larger pieces of art? Um, with pastel? They or... didn't say specifically, so I would apply it to pastel. Yeah, um, yeah, I would just get like, a, I'd probably work on an easel actually. I tape my paper down to a big board and, and if you have an easel with an adjustable uh, mast that can tip forward, you wanna tip it towards you a little bit so dust will fall down and not across the surface of your picture. And um, and also I like the fact of having it on easel because then you don't have to worry as much about like your pets laying on it. Like if your cats like to explore your art table, they're not gonna lay on it and you know get covered in dust. Um, and then you can kind of walk, if you can get away from it, if it's a large piece like that, you don't wanna be so close. You need to back up to really see what you're doing. So an easel will really help you there. If you don't have an easel, see if you can find an area of your wall that you can tape your paper to, like where it won't be disturbed and, and do that. Just something so you'll be able to back up away from it. Cause you have to, using pastels, you're using your hands. You don't have a long paintbrush. So you're right there on top of it. And um, if you can get yourself away from it a little bit, that will give you um, a better perspective and it will make it a little bit easier, a little bit easier to judge what you're doing. I'm using this kind of brownish green here. It's a nice earthy olive color. And 
And I like pastels because they give you a very impressionistic look. So I'm not going for like super realistic. I'm going for more of like uh, an emotion or a, um, just more suggestion. Now this is a good color. It's nice and dark and earthy. It would work really well for any little like spots or shadows that we want to add in here, but you have to do it very gently or you're going to end up with, um, with a muddy mess. So I'm just putting in a few little dabs of that color to tone down the pink. I'm going to do a little over here too, because that's really a loud color. And I'm gonna see what I have for pencils. If I have a nice dark, like dark eggplant colored pencil, I mean, not colored pencil, pastel pencil, I can use that there too. These are the Van Gogh ones. If you ever see these somewhere, like at a yard sale, snag them because they are really wonderful. I'll grab this dark purple, see how that would work. They didn't, they didn't last very long in the market, it didn't seem like. Seems like they were out and then they were gone. I'm gonna do little spots on the center of that stamen there. And you can see that this, usually it's hard to get pencils to stick on top of pastel, but these are soft enough too, as are the generals. Shading the back of that bottom petal. I'm gonna do it over here too. Did anybody chime in with if they'd use the pit pencils? Cause I'm kind of curious. Yes. Yeah, what was the consensus on uh, those? People seem to like them. Oh, that's good, okay. Well, I've, I've used a lot of the Pitt products. I love their pens. Um, they seem to be, Faber-Castell makes good quality products, but I just had never, it takes so long to use up any sort of pencil medium that, you know, you don't wanna just keep collecting willy-nilly or you'll never get through the stuff that you buy. going through and accenting any little bits that I feel like I want to have a little bit more definition. If things look too fuzzy, I'm going through and just adding shadows and adding shadows when you're working with something like flowers or fruit, adding shallow shadows with a color friend works a little bit better and makes your work look a little fresher than, is it, than if you used an opposite color or if you use black. So by using purple, this eggplant purple to shadow, I'm gonna get a much fresher look, but I'll also get that darker color, but it'll just look a lot crisper and nicer than if I used an opposite being like a green, which would be the opposite of the red or the pink or using a um, using just a black, which would just kind of make everything kind of deadened. But keep your lines going with the contours. I like I wanna shadow in there a little bit to help that the flower and back recede a little bit. How many people do we have hanging out with us today, Sarah? We have 337. Wow, that's awesome. I wonder if everyone's digging out or if a lot of people are from warmer, warmer areas. I think we have a good variety. Probably, probably people need a break from snow shoveling. Ah, now that line's a little too too heavy. So when I get a, a heavy line on the outside of something, what I'll do is I will push in with my clue with a clean finger. Just kind of push in and that just softens it enough that it's not just glaring at you anymore. And I'm gonna take the same color and I'm gonna see if I can add any def definition over here. See if this will work for anything that I have going on over here. I like to do this over the green though because it does um, it does, it doesn't really muddy. It just kind of deepens it because that it's just a more crisp color. Cooler colors tend to be more clean and crisp for whatever reason. Warmer colors tend to get muddier. When you think of what, like what brown looks like, brown is like a super desaturated orange. And the opposite of the opposite of that color would be blue. Your blues are crisper and cleaner. I'm gonna give just a little spark of that magenta into some of these buds. You wouldn't see a lot because they're closed up. So the color is on the inside of the bud and you're just kind of seeing it through the transparent veil. 
of the petal, of the closed bud. So I don't want to put too much on there. Bev Roberts, I've seen other YouTubers use a tool with a silicone chisel tip to blend pastels. Do you ever do that? Oh, a color shaper. You know what? I don't think I've used it for my pastels before. That's a good idea. I should try that. Thank you. Great idea. Actually, I don't get the color shapers because they're too expensive. I buy the nail tools on Amazon because <laughs> it's like the same thing. But like quarter of the price. I was highlighting with a little bit of white. You could do that with your pencil if you don't want to go in with a clumsy stick. And let me tap this off and take a look and see if I need to do any more defining here. I feel like there, I don't see a stem on the uh, the reference photo, but I feel like I would have um, a little bit of stem kind of coming off. And granted, that would be covered with a mat probably, but I feel like I feel like it would be it would be kind of cool maybe to have have a few other buds. So I think I want to sketch a few in there. It's my picture, artistic license, and all. You can do whatever you want here, but I'm going to throw a couple more buds in. So I just thought it would look kind of cool to have things clustered around in this, this section of my picture. So I'm going to go ahead and use any color that I had used previously. For whatever reason, I let that one fall down in my tray, but I remember using it. And that will be kind of cool. Just give it a little, little something extra. And any of, just use any of the colors that you previously used in the buds. And we'll be just about done. This is actually, that's another thing I like about pastel is that you can put your color down so quickly that once you get past the hot mess stage, it does finish up pretty quickly. Use this brown. And do some blending here so I can put my final highlights on and details. Just be careful where it touches the plant, uh, the flower blooms rather, that you don't smudge that green into your into your flower petals. You don't want to push out from the from the flower to do that. some whites in there. Just tap off the dust one more time and then we'll go into the pencils for any final details that we want to add. I'm going to grab this uh, dark purpley eggplant color. That one worked really well for us before. If you have any final questions, make sure you get them into Sarah so that uh, we I can answer. We have people looking to not leave comments on your blog. They can't figure out where to do that. Oh, yeah. Scroll to the end of the post. If it feels like the blog goes on forever, um, when you go to my blog, just click on the head, click on the article that says, like, giveaway and draw new drawing class. And um, then scroll to the end of that post. And it should say leave a comment. Click on that, leave your comment. If you've never commented before, you're not, it's, it'll say like a waiting moderation or you just won't see it right like live on the page. That's because whenever somebody leaves a new comment, I have to approve it, but I will approve it. So, so just go ahead and leave it and it will be there. Don't worry. And I will, uh, I will pick a winner from everybody that left their comments next week. And I email the winner so you don't have to worry about, you know, waiting, you know, with bated breath for me to post about it. I always email. That's why I take the winners um, on my blog instead of YouTube because I can't contact people on YouTube. I mean, they might not see that I'm trying to contact them, but on when you leave a comment, you leave your email address and nobody else in the world can see it, but I see it in the back end of my website. 
and that way um, I can contact you. But if you left emails here on YouTube, you'd probably get a ton of spam and all kinds of junk like that. So I don't like to expose people to that. Uh, Alexander Manga, how long is a class on sale for? Until the 31st. It's the month, uh, month, month launch launch month special. Good grief. So if you get any fingerprints, you can go ahead and just kind of press your kneaded eraser onto the paper. If you do have a smudge that went a little wild, you can kind of just kind of wiggle it and lift and that will clean it right up. And I'd probably do that like um, if you know you're gonna go back in with some more like uh, defining lines, like maybe you're gonna go back in with pencils, doing this cleanup before you do that is um, is probably pretty smart because then once you put those final color pencil, I mean pastel pencil marks, you're gonna be done. You're not gonna have to go back in and try to not smudge those lines you just put. Because if you do end up smudging something or taking a little bit too much off, then you can correct that pretty easily. Or like if maybe when you were sketching, you have a stray line from that, and this is, you can take care of that with that. A kneaded eraser is a wonderful thing. All right, so just take a once over, look at your piece, see if you want to add any more white. I, would, I wouldn't blend this layer. When you're putting on your final highlights and your final marks, I would leave them because that just gives you that like kind of urgency. It gives you a beautiful, I feel like, movement and feeling to your work because you can actually see where the artist had put those strokes. So I don't blend the, that final layer. Okay, and I did find this nice hot pink pencil. I thought I would just kind of maybe, whoops, hopefully I can. I think we're all caught up on questions. All right, well, my lead came out of this pencil, but I am stingy, so I'm going to just take this piece of lead and add some movement lines on the petals. Well, I thank everyone for hanging out today. I have no idea. This feels like this was quick. I don't know. Was this quick? Uh, just under an hour. So nice. Quick. I mean, quick, but not super quick. That's true. Last week's went a little longer. Our cabana shack there <laughs> went kind of long. If you are grabbing a new color to throw in at the end, just make sure you find places to use it throughout the picture so it doesn't look out of place. And um, there you have it. So we've got pretty orchids done in pastel. Uh, you could substitute the colors if you wanted to do different shades. I would maybe find some reference photos of orchids that you like and you can copy those colors. They come in all sorts of colors so you could really have a lot of fun with that. And um, yeah, that's all I have today. Don't forget to go over and sign up to win if you haven't already that sketching set from Royal and Langnickel. And all the products that I use are linked in the video description. And they're all pretty affordable products too, which is uh, which is nice, especially if you're just kind of not sure if you really want to get into pastel, but it looks like fun. That's a great sketching medium that you can try very inexpensively using your sketchbook. If I had this in a sketchbook, I would take a piece of deli paper or um, glassine, or even, you could probably even use tissue paper, but deli paper has like a, a wax coating on it or like a plasticky coating on it rather. And I just use a little washi tape and I tape it down over my paper so that even when I open and close a sketchbook and flip through it, it's not rubbing. And that just keeps my pastels nice without fixative. But of course you can use fixative if you want to. Anything you want to add, Sarah? I'm all set. All right. Well, thanks so much for watching, guys. And until next time, happy crafting.